I don't like the way I look today, but uh, you know what, that's just a part of life. Hello everyone, my name is Zoe and welcome back or welcome to the channel. Today we have a magical book review. So today we are reviewing Magical Housekeeping by Tess Whitehurst. So this book retails in the US for $16.95 and it's a pretty lengthy book. It has about, let's see, it has 210 pages so I think for that price it's a pretty good sized book and I really liked this book but there were some things that I didn't like about it and we're gonna talk about that today. My overall rating for this book would be I'd say a four out of five stars. To start off this book is what I expected this book to be was gonna be a lot of spell work and rituals surrounding around cleaning and cooking and stuff like that. To my surprise there was that in there but there was a lot more to it than just cleaning and cooking. There was a lot of decorating, a lot of feng shui, a lot of like just like a lot of things I wouldn't even have thought about and stuff. There's also crystals and stuff like that in here and it doesn't 100% just base off of housekeeping, you know, it does tangent off about like color correspondences, crystals and stuff like that which you can incorporate into your home decor and stuff like that. So I'm going to talk about the things that I like. I have myself a little list that I wrote here. So the things that I liked about it was the, the rituals that were in this book were organized and really easy to do and understand. Even if like you're a beginner or a well-practiced practiced witch, I really liked the rituals in here because it seemed versatile for anyone to do. They had common ingredients that you could find around your home and or just stuff that just was easy to do and there was a lot of things that wasn't heavily on like spell work but uh, like I like to do is like a lot of ritual mists and using different you know <laughs> like and like making stuff I like that <laughs> I also like that there was no real religious bias so they talked a lot about like different cultures and they did talk about like different religions and stuff like that like Christian and uh, Wiccan and Buddhism and stuff like that, but they didn't like focus on that and they didn't say, oh, you can only do this if you're like under this religion or anything like that. They were like, oh, if you're into angels, you're into angels, you know? It wasn't like, oh, you have to be Christian, Catholic, whatever to believe in angels and like have angels around your house or anything like that. It wasn't religiously biased, which I really like because a lot of witchcraft books in general are usually heavily Wiccan based and witchcraft and wicca while they do go hand in hand are not needed for each other. I also like that they had an appendix in the back with all the color correspondences so if you didn't want to go digging through the book you could just come back to the appendix here and it has all the color correspondences. Again I really liked that this book was really good for anyone of any level and it also was like, it's magical housekeeping, but it's, she's not like you have to be a witch to like do this stuff. This is stuff that anyone can incorporate into their life or a witch can incorporate into their daily mundane practices, which I really, really like. <laughs> it's just like if any regular person just wants to bring a little bit of magical spice into their life, this book is for you and I really, really like that too. It also gives many, many options just in case like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to like explain it, but it gives like different options and different rituals and stuff to see what you're comfortable with and it even like encourages you to like utilize what's in the book but make your own practice out of it, you know? So you can like pick and choose what you want to use and like you don't, she's not like, oh there's only one way to do this so you have to do it this way. She's like, there's so many ways you can do this and these are just some ways and there's like a bunch of diverse options that she gives and I really like that. And what I absolutely love about this book too, and this is a problem that I have a lot with a lot of witchy books, is that she actually gives you all the information that you need so you don't have to go researching more and more and more like what is she even talking about? What is this? Like when she says like feng shui, you don't have to be like, it's not, it doesn't just end there. She's just like feng shui, the end. If she like explains what feng shui is, she explains how you can incorporate it into your magical practice. She 
talks about different types of feng shui and like the reasons of why feng shui and stuff is really good and stuff like that. So yes, you should always cross reference and you should do deeper research if you really want to know a lot about that specific subject, but she gives you enough information that you aren't left hanging and not really knowing what they're talking about. So those are the things that I liked the most about this book, but now we're going to talk about stuff that I didn't like and I don't know. So when I was reading this book, it did seem a little, some parts seemed a little bit pretentious. Just, uh, I, she is obviously a white woman who probably comes from a wealthy family or she herself is wealthy because there was just a lot of things that were like, the biggest thing that peeved me was the mattress thing. So she was like, they say that you should always change your mattress. I don't remember if it was every six months or every year. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. I barely, I've never bought a mattress in my life because I have not had enough money. I just always get hand-me-down mattresses when I do get that. Mattresses are super expensive. Like she just expects you to be able to purchase things and just be able to like have things and like access things. And there's a lot of stuff that in here that's like related to a house house like housekeeping does not have to be just like the actual house for a single family to live in it like my I live in an apartment you know with my dad uh, we own this building but you know if we didn't we wouldn't be able to paint the walls and paint the doors and plant plants outside without permission or decorate the outside of the house or some apartments don't even let you hang things on the walls you know so it was just kind of pretentious in the way that she expected everyone to be living in a house and to be financially stable enough to do some of the practices and the mattress thing oh my gosh that's where it got me so hard just in that section it really like ticked me off because it's like people this is not practical even for like people who are financially stable i also didn't like that there wasn't that much housekeeping so there was a lot more feng shui there was a lot more decorating and there was stuff about like other things like crystals and stuff like that but there wasn't for me i expected the whole <laughs> book i know this was like a bad expectation to be coming into but i expected a lot more like cooking and cleaning you know but there actually wasn't like too too much of that i feel and i love cleaning and i was looking for a bunch of like magical washes and stuff like that there were a few in there but it wasn't like enough to my satisfaction i also really didn't like the lack of caution when she talks about working with deities and with fairies so even though this book is fairly beginner friendly she just talks so nonchalantly about working with fairies and working with deities and like when talking to deities you can't just be like yeah, here you go, like, whatever. You can't be, like, nonchalant when, like, talking to deities. A little bit more proper, and you have to be very respectful and stuff like that. Or bad things could happen to you. They could get mad at you, depending on the deity, and they might mess up your life. Same with fairies. You really need to be careful about that. And I didn't like how she just talked about them so nonchalantly, like there was nothing wrong with it. While there is nothing wrong with it, it is something to be cautious of because it's not always a safe thing for you to do. So like I said, I would give this book four out of five stars. I did really like this book and I do want to utilize some of the, the recipes and rituals in this book. I haven't done anything yet, but there's also like a little map that she gives in here, which I don't really like that map because it, here it is. So this is like saying each of these, you put like your house in here and the front door is supposed to be somewhere up towards the top. And like this, you put over your like blueprint of your house. And then these are like this corresponding areas to sections of your house if I was going by that map this my bedroom would be the serenity and self-love area which is cute but honestly there's nine squares here she's not saying that like you're supposed to have a room for each area like you can have a small house and whatnot but 
she does suggest that you put things in these areas or like altars in each area according to the corresponding part which is like I'm sorry but if you live in a one room apartment I'm not gonna have an alt nine altars in one room and I feel like she heavily focused on like feng shui and that grid I feel like that grid was like heavily interpreted into the rest of the book I feel like everything in this book besides like the rituals and stuff should be taken like with a grain of salt and really only incorporate it if you really feel connected to what it says. Um, so this isn't any sort of specific practice book. I feel like it's really loose that anyone can incorporate into their life and into their practice and it really would help like take the mundane and make it a little bit more magical. So I did really like this book and I can't wait to try out some of the rituals and the, the recipes. I do recommend this book. If you come across it and you really like housekeeping or if you're really interested in learning how to cleanse and protect and uplift the energies of your home, give this book a try. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you did, please hit that like button down below and subscribe <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.